What do you think made Conventa so successful? Well, I think, first of all, it's the vision of what Conventa is. What Conventa is, it was an idea of bringing uh, the largely unknown destinations of this part of Europe together because it was a recognition that more long-term business could be generated by working together rather than competing individually. The reality is this part of Europe is largely unknown still to many international meeting planners. So bringing the region together in a single room um, was the right idea. It was a very clever idea which emanated from the Convention Bureau here in Slovenia. Um, what would you say you learned about the region when you were uh, implementing and consult uh, consul consulting for Conventa? Well, first of all, um, I, I became connected to Conventa when I ran the world's largest trade show in this uh, meeting space. Um, uh, and uh, Slovenia and indeed Croatia and Serbia were my clients. And so uh, the director of the uh, Slovenian Convention Bureau and I got chatting about it and I said, well, we would help. Um, and so we helped publicize the Hosted Buy program and I helped with the education program. And then when I recreated my international consultancy, uh, there was a natural progression for me to um, work with them. So that's the background. But I, I first came to Slovenia in 2006, never been, um, came over to sort a problem out uh, and absolutely fell in love with the country and Ljubljana as a city. And I think it is the safest capital I've ever been to anywhere in the world. Um, and what I discovered was this passion of a new generation in a young, independent country determined to create a new economic sector because that's what the world of meetings and events is. It's not tourism. It, it, because the purpose of events and meetings is nothing to do with tourism. It involves travel, it involves staying in hotels, it involves visiting, but the purpose and the way uh, a destination is used is different. And I was really pleasantly surprised with the professionalism of some of the people I met, the fact that, for example, in Ljubljana, we've got two large centres, an exhibition centre that can do conventions and a multi-purpose arts centre that can do both conventions and small-scale exhibitions. So I was very pleasantly surprised, but what really took my breath away uh, was seeing Ljubljana and then seeing Lake Bled, which I think is one of the most magical places on earth. Um, and I never come to Slovenia except this visit and not visit Bled. And ever since then, I've become uh, an unofficial ambassador of the country, but also the region, because I've also been to Serbia, Croatia, uh, Montenegro. Uh, and think this is an undiscovered part of Europe to many meeting professionals. So that's my impression. A lot to do, a lot of promotion, a lot of marketing, more development, better airlift, all of those things, but a great place to do business. How do you think that Conventa can set apart from other trade shows? Well, the model is different. Um, the most important difference is that Conventa is not for profit. No one makes a profit from the show itself because it's uh, owned by the Convention Bureau, which is a not-for-profit organization, and it's a public-private partnership. Some of the partners are public convention bureaus and tourist boards, other are commercial operations such as the hotels, um, destination management companies. And so the meetings community uh, here, in here in Ljubljana and Slovenia more widely have come together and invest in um, the project. So for example, uh, the hotels here, including the Union, the Rev, um, Austria Trends, uh, Hotel Slon, provide uh, the hotel accommodation for the international buyers and media and special guests without a fee um, in return for the long-term development. So that's the clever nature of it. And the clever nature is that Ljubljana is positioning itself as the gateway for meetings in the region, and that's the really clever vision. Uh, can you tell us more about the format of the brand of uh, new K, a new UK show? Well, thank you for asking, because as you know, I advise the new UK show. Uh, the new UK show is strictly UK inbound, UK outbound. And why is that relevant to this part of the world, perhaps, is the key question. Well, at the moment, the strongest outbound meetings and events market in Europe is from the UK. It is not the biggest it's not the biggest industry of any country, that's Germany. 
but nevertheless the outbound business is extraordinarily strong. And the big opportunity for this part of the world is to tap into this incredibly important market. So the new UK show, which is being held in the heart of London in Kensington, uh, will have 1,500 hosted buyers in year one, plus probably another 5,000 senior buyers from all over the UK. So it's a chance in a very structured way, and it's a very similar model to Conventor, appointment driven, very carefully selected hosted buyers coming together under one roof um, with education, with networking, with fam trips. Um, and so it's a chance for Slovenia and, other, uh, and Croatia and other destinations to tap into this incredibly large market. Um, what is the thing that motivates you to keep inventing new forms of trade show? Well, I'm not an exhibition specialist. Well, I don't claim to be um, because I ran a convention centre. Um, before that, I was a public servant uh, in London's government. So I regard myself as a meeting professional, having run a convention centre and I've been an event planner. Um, and I now advise, destina my main business is I advise destinations about how to get more meetings business. But it does seem the industry want me, my services to advise them about doing events like this. Um, the reality is um, there are hundreds of thousands of meeting planners around the world and people that do events business. My daughter does events business but she's not called a meeting planner. She's a business development executive uh, or manager in an international law firm. And so it's a very big market and growing. Um, and so if you come up with different models, and the great thing about Conventor is that of a scale that feels intimate, the hospitality is extraordinary. So the buyers will keep coming to ev these events which are well structured, run by people that understand the language which the buyers speak. And you have to speak the language of the customer if you're going to get their business. Um, what do you think in years to come um, the continued growth of technology will mean um, that we see, I don't know, fewer trade shows and less of face-to-face -face events? I don't believe at all there'll be less face-to-face -face events with the advent of uh, more and more sophisticated and accessible uh, information and communication technology. There's no evidence to suggest at all that that's the case. If anything, even social networks now have face-to-face -face meetings because the connections are made and people want to actually look in someone's face and see the emotions and hear the inflections in voice. Um, but also, globally, what we have to think about is that as countries become more democratic, um, people are have more rights and accessibility and freedoms, it's a natural progression that more face-to-face -face meetings for business for scientific exchange, for educational exchange, for cultural exchange, and the meetings industry cover all those, will happen. And there is very clear evidence that the economic importance of the world of meetings and events is beginning at last to be recognised by politicians around the world. Because meetings and events generates more, a much greater economic benefit per person than, than traditional tourism. Um, what would you say are the methods that exhibitor, exhibitors are using to engage trade shows buyers? Well, it varies, and, uh, and I'm going to be very honest with you. You have some exhibitors that research the buyers in advance of getting here, and that's the right thing to do, and try to contact them and say, looking forward to meeting you. You have other exhibitors who simply turn up and then ask a meeting planner whether they plan meetings, which is a really stupid question. Uh, and we have to get be, become more professional and sophisticated uh, and do our research because why would the buyer be here if they don't plan meetings and events and if you go around the show you will hear one or two people talk to the buyers well do you plan meetings no i am actually a circus clown um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of development amongst the human resources in the supply side to carry on and you have this contrast we have highly professional well researched well prepared professionals um, I, th I think what's got, what is most important is to bring the right type of buyer here and actually help train the supply side, help brief the supply side of how to get the best out of the buyer because the buyers are here because they want to be here. The buyers get invitations to go all around the world all of the time. They probably get an invitation every day of the week to go to some place or another. 
and many of them will sound terribly exciting like the West Indies or the Indian Ocean countries or South Africa you know and people will say well where's Slovenia where's Montenegro and, well isn't Bratislava the capital of Slovenia yeah. simply because it's got Slov in the name um, and so there's a great opportunity here to grab the business that these people have and we are talking about tens and tens and tens of millions of euros of business here so with the right preparation with the right focus over the mid to long term and it is a mid to long term strategy exhibitors shouldn't suddenly turn up and expect a buyer coming to these trade shows to have their order book ready that's not how it works this is about relationship creating so that the buyers will say well i met someone say from compass dmc that covers many of the areas of southeast europe of course they were really professionally well informed highly helpful people the type of DMC I want to do business with. And that's the opportunity they have to grasp. What Conventa does, it creates this lovely environment for that to happen. The welcome and hospitality is marvellous. You truly are an ambassador of Slovenia. Yes, I am. Um, and I do it naturally, because I'm told to do it. <laughs> Super. Um, f- for the end, after all you said now, how do you think that meet- meetings industry will evolve and be like, let's say, in... 2020 okay well first of all no one really knows what's going to happen in 2020 in the meetings industry or any other economic sector what I think would have happened by then first of all I think the people working in the industry will be truly recognized as a profession in their own right because we now have event management and business tourism being taught in the universities around the world so we will have several generations by then of highly educated well-informed trained young adults coming into the world of work in our in our world of meetings and events which is a great thing secondly i think there'll be much wide, more wide wider political understanding of the economic and social importance of the world of meetings and events when we think that the world of meetings and events in america employs more people than the automotive industry you begin to realize how important it is to a national economy um, I think that the world of destinations will become more competitive because if you think there are 105,000 towns and cities in Europe alone and 500 regions officially, you begin to think, well, this is a competitive business. So I think we will have to continue to develop smart ways of bringing those people who we want to sell to and buy our products to come and meet us face to face. What is clear is that we can't sit in our offices and wait for the business to come to us. So I think what, what will happen uh, is that eventually the macroeconomic benefits of our world will be truly understood. Accessibility to this area of the world, which needs improving. Uh, unfortunately, the scheduling of airlines into Slovenia, for example, is not as good as it needs to be and should be. Uh, and, it, and other developing, if you like, unknown areas of the world, like Lithuania, where I also work, is going to relaunch a national airline because they understand the macroeconomic benefits of running a national airline without necessarily being first concerned that it should turn a trading profit because of its economic multiplier effect for the whole national economy. And so I think that there will be a realisation of that. I think the quality of facilities will improve, um, but always destinations that can create a difference, a special feel, as well as doing all of the things professionally, will win the business. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome.